Today, we're gonna to be talking about pulling triggers. We're gonna talk about the three ways you can pull a trigger on a pistol in a practical shooting context. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Armory Life. I'm David from the Humble Marksman channel here on YouTube. Today, we're gonna to be talking about trigger manipulations, the three fundamentals with which you can address your trigger and the applications in which they make sense. This video is actually the second video in a series on practical shooting, and I would encourage you to go back and watch the first video about grip and recoil management because a lot of trigger manipulation is colored by how you're gripping the pistol. So if you've got a poor grip, any sins in your trigger pull are gonna actually be amplified. So let's start with a good grip on the gun and then let's worry about how we're pulling the trigger. And there are three trigger fundamentals we will be covering. The first is the slow fire surprise break, which is great for group shooting or bullseye style shooting. There is the prep and press, which is an amazing technique that makes sense in pretty much every application. And then there is controlled slapping or trigger slapping. Trigger slapping is great. It saves a lot of time on easy targets with a high probability of success. However, However, its usefulness sort of runs out uh, as you get into the middle distance ranges with pistols. So with that said, we're going to show you the techniques and ways that you can practice them both with and without ammunition. So slow fire fundamentals are exactly what they sound like. Now you need to realize that there are two aspects to printing small groups. There's the actual aiming the gun at the target piece, and that's going to require you to have a target that works with your eyes and your sight. So uh, something with like a red fiber optic like this uh, XDM Elite five and a quarter has is not going to do well with like a red bullseye and similarly like the NRA B8 style targets don't do great with iron sights because it's a black background that you're trying to put your sights in the middle of. So find something that's gonna work for you. And I'm going to be using a USPSA standard target right here. And I'm gonna use the head box specifically. First thing you're going to do is aim the gun at the target, get a good sight picture. And I have my red dot in the center of the target's head and there is gonna be a natural wobble zone, you accept that wobble zone. So when you begin to pull the trigger, you ignore aiming. Just let the gun be pointed where it's going to be pointed and to begin to slowly, slowly build pressure on the trigger until eventually the trigger is gonna release. It's gonna be a surprise break. You've probably heard that term before. And then you're gonna let the gun go off and the hole is gonna show up wherever it shows up, likely where you started aiming in the first place. But the key to success when doing slow fire is to allow the sights to move around. As you slowly build pressure on the trigger, the sights are probably gonna bounce around a lot. Just hang with it and let them go. Just increase pressure on the trigger until eventually the gun goes off and it surprises you. The second trigger fundamental is prep and press. A lot of people are probably gonna think you don't have time for that in a practical shooting context, and you actually, there's an amazing amount of time for it. Uh, the beautiful thing about prepping the trigger is you can do it while you do other things. For instance, if you're coming up on a draw, you can have your trigger prepped and ready to let go. Similarly, if I'm moving target to target, I can be on the trigger, ready to shoot. But more than that even, if I'm shooting at the same target, the gun trigger breaks, gun cycles, and I can try and reset the trigger as the gun is in recoil so that when the sights settle back in and I see what I have, I can just pull the trigger for the last 10% and send the round where it's supposed to go. So in order to develop a prep and press skill set, uh, starting with an unloaded gun here, you're going to basically do what you did when the slow fire, but a little bit faster. You're gonna feel the wall where your trigger basically stops moving to the rear. So you get on the wall and you hold it there. You've basically taken about 90% of the movement from the trigger and all that's left is the final 10%. And what's nice about this is it's very easy to pull the trigger and have it go accurately when you're only moving the trigger as little as you can. So I'm on the wall right now and I'm gonna try and get off the trigger and get back on as quick as I can. So it's gonna look like this. So here it is again. And you're really trying to race your front sight back to the target to come all the way off the trigger and then all the way back on, taking the slack out of it, getting ready for the next shot. So now that you understand what that kind of feels like in live fire, how to prep the trigger and get right on the wall, now you can actually practice it in dry fire and you can use it with uh, some other skills that you would be using in a practical shooting context, such as like your draw and your transitions. The goal is to develop the feel of being able to bring your trigger to the wall and being ready to fire. Another drill you can do is with an unloaded gun in dry fire, since ammo is precious right now, get pointed at a target, break a shot, keep the trigger pinned to the rear, cycle the slide. At uh, external stimulus, I'll use a shot timer here. I'm gonna reset the trigger as fast as I can. 
See, that was a bad pull because I sent the next round. The goal is to get off the wall and back on right to the point of you getting ready to break a shot. So let's try it again. So there we go, that rep was a success. I'm held on the wall. I did it as fast as I could. This is a great drill you can practice in dry fire to learn that prep and press. And it's okay if you fail because there's no ammo on the line. And for another drill, practicing like a target transition, if you start with a dead striker, I'm gonna hold the trigger to the rear. I'm gonna cycle the gun. I'm gonna start pointed at one target with my finger on the trigger. And whenever I'm ready, I'm just gonna bring the gun onto the next target. I'm gonna take my finger all the way off the trigger bring it all the way back on, taking the slack out of the trigger to be ready to shoot when the gun arrives at the next target. So you'll hear the click, hopefully, when I do the transition. So it'll be like this. So as soon as the gun settles into the A zone on the next target, I've got the trigger prepped to the wall, ready to shoot again. And that's gonna allow me to shoot sooner when we practice transitions, which will be a future video. And at this point in the video, you're probably thinking to yourself, man, those sure are some sharp red base pads he's got there. Yes, they are. These are from Springer Precision. They are one of the brands that has been around supporting practical shooting forever. And they helped produce the video that you're watching now. So check out Springer Precision if you need uh, uh, aluminum stuff for your guns. So check them out. And our final trigger technique is the trigger slap. And guys, this is a more advanced skill. If your recoil management is such that you can't hold the gun steady while it recoils, if you have a flinch, if the gun just moves around a lot because you don't know how to lock your wrists out yet, and you don't understand how to hold the gun on target through the recoil arc, do not attempt this in live fire. Go back, watch the first video on recoil management again. And when you're getting started on this, if you have a membership at an outdoor range, start right up on the berm. So we're gonna go right up to the three yard line and show you the trigger slap. So trigger slap's exactly what it sounds like. You're just gonna slap the trigger sort of as fast as you can to basically have targets at very close distance where you don't need a lot of sights, you don't need a lot of trigger to make your hits. So you just torch off the rounds as fast as you can. It's useful in USPSA and to a lesser extent IDPA, probably doesn't have a huge application on the self-defense side. So what that's gonna look like is the following. So I have pretty good recoil management and you can see that the holes are showing up basically touching at the three yard line. But in order to use this skill properly, you kind of have to adjust your vision and what you're calling kind of an acceptable shot. You're not actually looking at the sights when you're shooting at that speed, you're looking at the target. At three yards, the A zone frames my entire gun. I have, if I can see a red dot in the center of the A zone, I'm going to be getting an A zone hit at this distance. That's where I'm getting my target information from is how the sights are floating in front of the target, which is kind of a departure from the sight focused shooting a lot of people are taught. Uh, when you start getting into speed shooting, you are gonna learn how to blend the edges for acceptable sight pictures. And at this range out to about 11 yards for me, with an iron sided gun, I can have a hard target focus and guarantee good hits. But in order to get good trigger speed, you can only move with your finger as much as you have to to get the trigger to reset. So you're gonna be feathering it, but you can't be crushing the gun with your dominant hand. I'm right-handed. So my right hand, most of my grip strength is coming from my left hand. So you can see here that this is the amount of pressure I'm putting on the trigger. I understand this trigger, I know this trigger, so I'm not over pulling the trigger. In order to use this skill effectively and start to get more impressive speeds on splits, you're gonna have to loosen up your strong hand grip to allow your trigger finger to have more dexterity. And you need to understand your trigger, like how much trigger movement there is and how much force you need to be using. And once you have control of the skill, then you kind of get to do a walk back drill. So we're at five yards on the same paper target. I'm going to try and use the trigger slap skill and we're just gonna do a walk back. And you'll be able to hear based on my split time, that's the amount of time from shot to shot, the skill stops working and I start using a different fundamental, which will probably get me back into the prep and press once I hit kind of that middle distance. All right, so five yards, here we go. All right, so that is a 17 split. The hits are about two inches apart, so I can step back to seven yards. Seven yards, here we go. So again, I'm at the 17 split. It's seven yards, so I can step back. Both of the hits were uh, A zone hits, about two and a half inches apart. All right, same drill at 10 yards. All right, did you hear it? 
That was a point 18. So the skill is still useful for me at 10 yards, backing it up. All right, so, so far I'm at 12 yards now. Everything has been in the A zone in basically a size of my palm type group. So at 12 yards, I'm either going to expect the cadence to slow down because I want more sights or the groups to open up potentially. So let's see what happens at 12 yards. So at 12 yards, that's my same 17 split and I'm still keeping them in the A zone. So we're gonna keep going to 15 yards, 15 yards. All right, that time I can tell I dropped it down into the delta zone. So I'll show you the target of what we're dealing with. So this little group right here was what we did at three yards, initially demonstrating the trigger slap. When I started backing up, some of these extra holes were there and you can see that out to about 12 yards, all the shots were staying right here in this. When we backed it up to 15, if you come down here at that 17 split, that's too far for me. My fundamentals are not good enough to be able to trigger slap at 15 yards. So at about 15 yards, I'd be converting back to the prep and press fundamental for my second shot. Back at the same 15 yard line again, and I'll show you what a prep and press is gonna look like. Now you'll notice based just on the cadence, that that's significantly slower. That's a 0.36 split versus my trigger slap, which was getting me sub 20s. However, if we go look at the um, accuracy, it tells a different story. The accuracy is exceptional when I use the prep and press. So at about a 0.36, I'm able to keep the holes basically there using a prep and press technique. I'm giving up some time. However, my accuracy's increased dramatically when we consider what the holes looked like on the other target, which was about somewhere in here, and the follow-up shot came back all the way down here. You just can't miss fast enough. The game mechanics don't work. And another quick drill that you can do to help with your trigger slapping is going to be in dry fire with an unloaded pistol. You're going to assume your grip, and you're going to have an external stimulus, and get on the trigger as fast as you can and drag it straight to the rear and watch the front sight or your dot. You're trying to immobilize your wrist, but pull the trigger as fast as you can. As soon as you hear the beginning of the B in the beep you're responding to, see if you can't make it happen. So uh, if you're a Mantis X10 user, you can actually use the Compress Surprise Break app, and that works pretty well to help condition you and shoot for a score above 80. If you can trigger slap with a score in the Mantis X above 80, then you have a pretty good trigger control and you can do it at speed pretty good. So at this point, you have a good foundation in recoil management and trigger manipulations. The next videos in the series are gonna be dealing with gun handling, specifically the draw and then reload. Post up in the comments some skills that you would like to see covered in future videos. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.